Attention everyone, I'm not asking for money or anything, but I just want to make a huge announcement. I'm one of the finalists on RuPaul's Drag Race Woo! this year! Today, we woke up and chose violence. Hi, James Manscape. Oh my god, hi, Yuhua Hamasaki. Are you ready to reveal every queen on this season of RuPaul's Drag Race? Today, we're gonna get petty. Super petty. Oh, girl, I am so ready because this was probably the most boring reunion I've ever had to witness. Nothing happened. There was no water oh. throwing, there was no flipping table, no fights, anything. It was just talking. There was no walking children in nature. There was no, well, guess what, Mimi? Nothing. Nothing. None of. Do I look upset to you? <laughs> we needed all of that. I didn't get anything. I left so edged. Yes, girl, give us nothing. <laughs> Make opinions. Spring is upon us. And are you looking to update your home? Let me share with y'all some of my favorite things from Temu. This video is sponsored by Temu, where they sell everything on there except at a fraction of the price and still high quality performance. That is so cool. At first, I was a little bit nervous about the products because you know what they say, you get what you pay for. But after testing these products out, I have to say that I'm very impressed with the quality and the price. They sell everything ranging from kitchen appliances, electronics, clothes, makeup, pet stuff, accessories, you name it. <gasps> Tell me more! So let me share with y'all what I got from Temu. To start off, I got these three pieces of duvet cover set. So beautiful, vintage bohemian wash cotton bedding set, including this fitted sheet. On top of that, I got these laundry washing scrubbing balls. So helpful. For the kitchen, I got these mini wooden spoons, just perfect for condiments. Next, I got these two pairs of stainless steel long chopsticks. Perfect when you're cooking and you need to get something out of there. The stainless steel drainer. So much more affordable than the other sites. Lastly, for the kitchen, I got the stainless steel trash bag holder. It makes cooking so much easier. Since I'm still scared of the dark, I got these two LED lights. They sense the dark to know when to turn on and off. And since I can't keep my jewelries organized, I got this gorgeous jewelry organizer. Ooh la 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 la. Lastly, I got this vacuum. Just what I need for spring. It is super high performance and it gets the job done. I know what you're thinking, okay? But Temu is completely legit and safe to use. And what I love about Temu is that they offer up to 90 days of free return. Plus, they accept all payment forms. I'm gonna sign up right now. So go to the link in the description and use my code to get 30% off your whole order. Plus, free shipping. And download the app for a much more smoother usage. Ooh, I like this over here. Let me add this to cart. Everything I've learned about this season has been completely against my will because had I not watched it through a viewing party booking, I probably wouldn't have watched it. I do enjoy it. Like there have been some very enjoyable moments, some very questionable things that have happened, but also it's like, you know what? I'm not gonna even go there. I enjoyed it. I think it's great. RuPaul's Drag Race is amazing. Yes, RuPaul's Drag Race is the most powerful thing in the world and we must bow down to them. Yes, I won't say anything cross about RuPaul's Drag Race, the franchise that has given me the opportunity to do things like bootleg opinions. <laughs> we will not bite the hand that feed us and we will not burn any bridges. <laughs> Absolutely not, at least not right now. <laughs> Are we swearing to oath or something? What the going on? I don't know, but you know what? I felt a cold sh like rush go through me. It's like, uh-oh, someone's watching. Maybe my house is bugged. I don't know. Well, to balance it out, you were at the beach earlier this afternoon. How was the beach? I was at a beach, I was at a pool party, and I left the party early to come do this. So you should feel really lucky right now, Yuha. Well, we were supposed to do it early in the afternoon, and you said I have some work to do. And then I checked your Instagram story, and then you were at the <laughs> pool. What the? No, girl, I was taking a mental health day, all right? You gotta get into that. Yes, mental health <laughs> is very important in 2023. We support that because we don't want to get canceled. I was silently quitting bootleg opinions. That's what I was doing. It's very millennial of me. You can't quit, baby. Once a bootleg queen, always a bootleg queen at heart. <laughs> I have friends now, so I've been neglecting my bookings. That's the problem right now. That's the girl I've become. You know why you have to move to Vegas to get some new friends? Because all your friends were getting murdered in Wisconsin. Probably. I was doing it. No, actually, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> they do have the highest rate of um, serial killers. <laughs> I mean, as far as things that Wisconsin does very, very well, they are very good at producing serial killers. Speaking of serial killers, we first up have Irene, who I thought just left <laughs> What was that transition? Very... Girl, all these transitions are very bootleg, girl. I don't know if you've ever seen any other episodes, but every transition on bootleg opinions has been very... 
Uh, not very thought out. But our sponsorships are always very thought out. The queens are always signing up, you know. They're always interested. They're always asking, what is that? Yeah, tell me more. <laughs> First up is Irene Dubois, the serial killer. <laughs> Yes, and I think that she was a queen that left too early in the competition. I first saw her promo look and I thought that this queen was at least going to make it at least halfway through the competition. In the first 15 minutes, this was just slaying in the episode that I thought that since the producers gave her so much yeah. airtime and a lot of confessionals, the will at least end up in top four. Nope, she did not. And she went home. I was gagged, honey. Like the way they were like showing her confessions this whole time and like she was on everyone's the second she walked in the room. So I was surprised like she bit the dust so early, but she did make water for a talent, so. Yo, well, you never know. RuPaul did enjoy balloons and stuffing food in their mouths and down under, so. This is very true. Yeah, so it could go anyway. She wasn't in the mood that day. Yeah. In any event, <laughs> what was Irene wearing? What was her outfit? I have to look at it again. I didn't retain any of these. It's okay, because a lot of them were, I'm going to be honest, they didn't care, girl. They just said, it's a reunion, it's not judged. Well, real talk here. How was the attendance at your viewing party for the reunion? Um, uh, It's less than usual because people usually come in for the actual competition yeah. and not the reunion. So I wasn't surprised. Mm -mm. What about you? Um, Well, they had a first Friday celebration here downtown. So that means like nobody was like at this viewing party. It was literally like me and like 10 people. What celebration? Well, they have first Fridays every month here in Las Vegas where like people go downtown in Las Vegas to like get food from food trucks. I don't understand, it's very straight. But the movie theater I was in, just like the viewing party was like, whoa, ghost town. No one came to watch a reunion. Well, you had a very intimate crowd, okay, James? Never give up. That's the thing, I, I asked them about what they did for a living. Like, we got to know each other, okay? I'm pretty sure I walked out with like five best friends. <laughs> <laughs> and did they tell you that they don't work and that's why they have so much time on their hands to come see you for the reunion? Maybe. In general, I like her. I mean, she's very, like, dry. It took me a while to get used to her humor, but, like, watching her in this reunion... It's very dry! I kind of like you, but anyway. <laughs> but no, like... Say it, James. Say it, James. Oh, I can say it here? Yeah, girl. <gasps> kind of like your vagina. How else do you think we get views? All we say is very dry. It's almost kind of like your vagina. If it ain't green, I ain't interested. And also, our newest one is... Well, you girls look good. <laughs> Have you gotten the palette yet? Has Lagan just sent you one? No, she did not. Um, yeah. Oh. Uh, Trixie never sends me anything, so. Yeah. Oh. But I have bought one of her lipsticks before from Trixie, yeah. Oh. That's kind of telling considering that you're all members of the House of Dry and the mother of the house, honestly. Oh girl, let's be honest, girl. We only had one episode for the House of Dry. That first and last episode, the house came and left right away. <laughs> The house is foreclosed. That was three years ago. <laughs> so yeah, what do you think about this outfit? Are those teeth? It's like bones and stuff. Like, it's kind of like her outfit that she wore for the first runway in black, except here is in white. But I do enjoy this a lot more. It's out there. I will say that it's a corset with a shoulder piece, but like, it looks like teeth or like vertebrae or something. <laughs> like, she is a serial killer. Oh my God. Yeah, like bones. She has the bones of all the first outs. All limbs legally. <laughs> In the basement. She's from Seattle, right? Mm-hmm. Here you go. I'm going to tell the story for you. The inspiration is the Seattle fish market, right? And this is like, you know, her bones here on the side are representing the fish that you can get there from all like the burly straight men that if you go there on the right night, they might think you're pretty and go home with you. Anyways, that's the story I'm concocting for her. It's a toot. We got a great detective over here making up stories as she go along. But yes, I can see that since she is from the west coast near the ocean, there's a lot of sea markets over there and she is serving some fish bones. It's recyclable. I like that. She's upcycling. Or in another case, she just has an outfit and didn't want to spend any more money, so she wore this. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those ones she packed. But I'll wear it eventually. It'll come into theme. Mm -hmm. Why are you on Pornhub? No, I'm not. <laughs> Impossible, baby. I don't use Pornhub because I'm cheap. No, 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 not. you know what? Let's scratch that. I only support OnlyFan people because I support local businesses. I love that. You support all of your friends. Yeah. That's sweet. You know what? Now that everybody's saying like everything's like online now, it's a lot cheaper. But the truth is, it's actually a lot more expensive. You got to pay different subscriptions for MTV, Paramount, YouTube, OnlyFans. Oh my God, the bill adds up to like $150. You might as well have cable, honestly. Yeah, cable is even more cheaper. <laughs> the world we live in now. This is what we're talking about instead of the looks from this reunion and nothing that happened in this reunion. Girl, there were some cringy moments, but we'll get to there later. <laughs> oh, yeah. So next up, we have Princess Poppy, who has came and left. Um, uh, 
I think that her promo look and as well as her reveal look, I really do enjoyed. But the rest of the looks that she showcased on Drag Race, did not like any of them. I think that her blue and silver outfit was one of the few worst looks from this season, honestly. You know. But she did show up in a very iconic look for the reunion. The famous Rebecca Glass color yes. that she entered in with a yellow <laughs> shirt, some jeans, and some chicken go wick. <laughs> I'm the queen of homophobic wigs, so I know a homophobic <laughs> wig when I see one. Baby, we all have seen and owned that wig shop wig. I think it was called like Miami or something. Like the brown shade, yes. I would live for it. I love the Rebecca Glasscock reference. And honestly, I love that it's the reunion, so you can either like go really out there like you did for yours, or just say, off with it and get really goofy, like she did, which I really love. And the reference to Rebecca Glasscock for the very ready to wear season one is everything. Yeah. Yeah. The standards before were a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I'm trying to look for something nice to say. But what do you think about her on this season, though? Um, I liked her. I mean, I didn't really get to see much of her, but I was excited. And, like, she followed me right away. Here's the thing. I have a very low scale of, like, me liking somebody. If they followed me on Instagram, I like you. That's how it goes. And if they don't follow me, you're dead to me. And she's like, yeah, hi, Poppy. I'm Quinning Drac. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I love this like weird Real Housewives style where they all got their little tagline. Like, it was a nice little change. It's probably one of the best things that we got this night. But you know what? I think hers is kind of true though because there is some rumors circling around that she is quitting drag too. That's That fine. she wants to go back and doing backstage stuff. You know, I know every tea about anyone, girl. That's why my hair is so small. That's fine because you know what? We have enough drag queens. Exactly. Stop stealing jobs from older season queens. <laughs> Are we the gatekeepers now? Oh my gosh. Yes, we are, baby. We are gatekeepers. <laughs> we gatekeep, we gaslight, and we girl boss here on Glute Leg Opinions. Yes, and we <laughs> bully people on looks that we hate. <laughs> Next up is Sugar, and she's one half of the house of twins. <laughs> yes, we'll just do Sugar and Spice. <laughs> yes, based on what they show on Drag Race, I think that she was okay for social media. She did great in the confessionals, but as far as experience go. She did lack a little bit. They should have waited a few more years. I can understand. Like, they were very, very green. But again, like, we can't justify what a drag queen is supposed to do, especially, like, if your standards are you have to perform in clubs and work the fields like that. There is such a thing as social media drag queens now, and that's exactly what Sugar and Spice are, and it's completely valid. And it is its own form of drag. Like, people said the same thing about Miss Fame, and she got out of the, like, performance scene and went and did her own thing and found her own lane. So that's just what the twins I expect are going to do. Like, I don't think they're going to steal jobs from anyone or really go hooking out in the drag circuit. So I don't think anyone really needs to worry. I think they're going to be influencers. I think they'll be just fine and they'll stay in their lane. How much did they pay to say all those Me? nice things? This is my own opinion because <laughs> I'd be such a if I sat here and like hated on someone for being an influencer when that's literally how I've made my money the past five years. Oh no, I'm not <laughs> hating them. I'm not hating them for being an influencer. I'm saying that the challenges are not all influencing challenges. Does that make sense? Yeah, I believe that. But also, like, I think people were very harsh on Sugar and Spice. And I feel like they did pull something from themselves that people didn't expect. And the fact that people's expectations were so low made it really pleasant when they actually would be impressive. Like, they were funny girls and they worked in the comedy challenges. And I also had the pleasure to meet their straight brother at the viewing party for the premiere. And they were just <laughs> so lovely. They were so supportive of both of their brothers, too. Yeah, And the entire family came out, too. So cute. But yeah, um, all nice things aside, I thought they were a little bit too green. Yeah, as far as their looks in this reunion, this is where I'll go in. I'll say they do have a tendency to have very similar looks. Like they all kind of have the same silhouette and same kind of image. You don't really get much of a story. And this one's felt like it was referencing like Lizzie McGuire, the movie, like the very end. I couldn't quite pinpoint what it was, but it seemed like something very familiar. The evil and the good one at the end. Yeah, that's what I was getting from it. Like the hey now, hey now. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just imagining something that wasn't there, but that's what I was getting. But you did point out something really good as well that I do agree with that there is no rule on how you should do drag. If you should work in a bar, if you should work in the theater, if you were doing social media, modeling, whatever you want to do with drag, that's up to you. But I think that for specifically for drag race, since some of the challenges are... Yeah. Touching base and performing, and as well as acting. Does that make sense? If RuPaul get rid of all those challenges, where you're just doing confessionals, just drag, no performing, no lip syncing, 
you know, it's a completely different story. But what I also liked is like, they completely were honest about the fact that they weren't good performers. And when they went home, they went home. Yeah. But for the most part, again, like when you go in there knowing that about yourself, you just know, okay, well I better do God well at these challenges to make sure I never land in the bottom. Like that's the responsibility that falls on your shoulders. And I feel like they carried themselves that way. Yeah, and that is a professional tip coming from someone who went home third and someone who went home first on both their respective seasons. Exactly. <laughs> and I'll say this, I lied off on my, on my audition tape. I said I could do a million things I couldn't actually do and I effed around and found out. Next up is Amethyst, another queen that I thought was a little bit too green for Drag Race. If another few more years, I think they would have been great. I think that she does really great in the confessionals, really great in the snatch game, acting and whatnot. But as far as the runway goes, they do lack a little bit compared to the rest of the girls because they just came in so strong. I would have loved to see her in a future All-Stars, to be honest. Oh yeah. And she didn't really get much airtime on the reunion, is it me? Or no, she that didn't. Really happen? I feel like she only got that one little moment with Robin and that was it. Like she was furniture at that point. <laughs> <laughs> she was a tree. She was a tree. <laughs> That's what I played when I was in middle school. A tree, I played a tree. Oh honey, they made you a tree? Yeah. Oh, going back to what you said about Amethyst, about her and Robin, I wish that they played off of it a little bit yeah. more. They were just kind of like, yeah, it didn't work out. Yeah, it didn't work out. Like RuPaul was like throwing honey, them. Her like her arms were tired from throwing, No, okay? her arms were like throwing <laughs> things at them and they weren't catching them at all. They RuPaul was like, here's your air times. Make something out of it. They were like, yeah, it's over. Yeah, I didn't end it. Yeah, what, you know. And then they Honey, were just like, no. No, RuPaul came in with a dump truck of airtime and like things for them to like throw at them to do. And no one really grabbed at anything except for Mistress. Mistress carried this reunion on her shoulders. <laughs> there was a meme going around how she is in hospital now for carrying this entire season on her back. <laughs> I live. <laughs> I think Amethyst in this look is a lot better compared to the rest of her other looks on this season. Raver Raccoon Princess. I love, I love, you know? She can swallow, you know, ceiling tiles without having to digest them like a raccoon, yes. She went from sweet 16 to, I'm running away, girl. <laughs> Thank you, parents. Oh, Skid Row never looks so good. Next up is Robin Fierce. Ooh. And what the f did she wear? Well, she didn't have much airtime. Yeah, she didn't really. And like, even when she was on the show, like I didn't really get to know much about her. Like she had a few good confessionals and that was kind of it. Like that was one thing I was I'm more disappointed by the fact that like I was really intrigued by like what could have been. That's where I am with Robin Fierce. Okay, give me a little bit more about Robin Fierce. Even though you haven't seen much of her. I'm also trying to remember because that was like 18 <laughs> girls ago. Like there were so many girls this season. Well, you girls look good. Um, uh, I do have to say that, I know me and you have gone back and forth about this, is that I do enjoy that every week someone is going home. There's just more of an urgency to watch the show. It keeps you on your hands, you know? Even when Marsha, Marsha, Marsha got sent home by Anitra, which I think that that lip sync should have been a double chante. Yeah. Even though she got sent home, I'm like, I want to see her back on All Stars. Whereas if it was a double, I've been like, okay, cool, deserving, but it wouldn't be as thrilling. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, this season reminded me a lot of season three where like girls went home and like no one got brought back. Well, that's not true. Season three, they brought people back. They brought back Shangela girl on the first episode. <laughs> and they brought back Carmen that season too. So bad example, bad example. Oh yeah. But again, like I just love that like flavor of an old season. I guess season nine where they didn't bring anyone back. If you got eliminated, you went home. Mm. And I miss that because yeah. Too many girls get second chances. I'm reminded of my own experience where I got sent home and I got nothing. <laughs> you got a RuPaul <laughs> doll, whatever that is. Oh yeah, I got my little mad cat that's slowly falling apart. <laughs> oh no, you have this too. I have it too. Oh, you better work. Here, I'll get my mad cat because my teddy bear is too far away. Did you know that they sent you a stand? Did you buy the stand too? The stand goes over RuPaul's neck to choke her so that it can stand. Did you know that? Oh, I know it went around the neck. Maybe that's why mine is like yeah. floating. So this is the Mac Cat. She is slowly falling apart. She's, she's held together with tape and she's missing fingers. Oh, mine's mi missing the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> we went on RuPaul's Drag Race and all we got was this lousy statue. <laughs> yeah, it fell off at the airport. That's dire, girl. Yeah, it went through the security and then they stopped me and they have to recheck the luggage because there was like a big piece of, I guess, metal in there. They want to check and see what it is. And they just went through and broke it. I live. Yeah. I love the airport. They asked me, what did you win at the trophy for? I said, oh, for baseball. Participation. Yeah. All right, back to Robin Fierce. Yeah, I do agree with you. The 
barely got any airtime. She is very sweet, very kind. I've worked with her one time for a Screaming Queens gig. And she actually helped took a photo of me and she's a great photographer on top of being a great customer service rep at Best Buy. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. That story about her going to Best Buy in full drag sometimes, like I was living. <laughs> as far as, you know, her on the season, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to pull teeth. I can't pull anything because they barely even showed her. Yeah. I didn't show anything. <laughs> But I do enjoy her in this almost kind of 90s, hot, retro, red look. Very sexy. Yeah, very that. Like, remembering, like, 90s R&B rap. Like, I love it. It's very Lil' Kim. Like, the Crush on You video is what I'm getting, where she's in, like, all red and, like, everything was themed around her outfit. Even her hair matched. You know what? This is also very Doja Cat, too. It's true. I agree. Yeah. Next up is Aura Mayuri, all the way from Tennessee, our Asian, uh, I don't know why I said our, you're not Asian, I'm sorry. My <laughs> Asian representation. <laughs> My Asian representation, and she has been the trade of the season for everyone. Oh. I think that all her looks are mostly great. I think that she does bring some of the great fashions onto this runway, with a few misses there. She had a pretty bumpy ride this season, but overall, I did enjoy her. And she was a fierce performer, I do remember that. And I love the fact that like she has all those muscles and doesn't shy away or like hide them. Like I love drag queens that have muscles that don't hide their arms or the back or their abs. Yeah. Like be a buff woman, why not? You know what I think she also does really well is, is although she has all these muscles, she always wears these shoulder pieces that are so big that make it seem like she's a very petite queen. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like she has to be teeny tiny looking at her. Like, out of drag, she is very like stocked, like, whoa, gorgeously put together muscles. But like in drag, she is soft. Yeah, she looks hot in this look with this white hair, this white outfit. It is fashion with a little hint of futuristic in there as well. As far as Mayori's run on this season, I felt like the fans kind of aimed her as the punching back a little bit. A little bit I yeah. feel like she got a lot of hate, but yeah, not deserving at all. It's just a TV show, you know? This look especially, what I liked about Aura Mayori is, and like this one in particular, like in reference to all of her other outfits too, she always wore clothes that were like in reference of like everyday outfits, like mm -hmm. jackets and shirts and things, but she would like elevate them to make it like high fashion. Yeah and like almost like a couture version of a t-shirt, like stuff like that, like, I love that. I like how I said all those things to help raise awareness that it's just a TV show and we shouldn't send hate to her. And you were like, yeah, thank you. And I also like that her outfit is very high fashion. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the disclaimer, I'm not gonna bring everyone down again. Okay, okay, oh, speaking of, <laughs> A very similar moment did happen while during the reunion too for her as well because she said that she's getting engaged and she asked everybody to send donations to the ACLU Drag Defense instead. Don't send her any gifts. And RuPaul's like, thank you. All right, let's take a break. Not even that. Like the also the weirdest segue in the world was after she like, who was it she confronted about having a crush on her? Oh, Poppy. Poppy, yeah. She's like, Poppy, do you still feel the same way? And then not even five minutes later, by the way, I'm engaged. I know. Like, <laughs> okay, first and foremost, okay, I would not say, yeah, it's seven inches. Let's get it going. I would, why, why would you, I don't know. That's just not me, girl. Why would you get so specific? You know what I mean? It was the, the reunion of the most uncomfortable segues <laughs> ever. I would have been like, yeah, it's, 30 inches, made a joke out of it so that people don't know. Cause you know, you gotta keep some stuff to yourself. I feel like yes, we're public figures, but you gotta keep some stuff for yourself. You know what I mean? That's what I feel like. She's proud of that seven inches. And you know what? Good for her. Life is about taking stances and being proud of the things you have, you know? Exactly. And it's probably seven inches thick and uncut too. I don't want to think any more about this. I'm divorcing <laughs> myself from this conversation. <laughs> she should change her name from <laughs> Poppy to Poppy, honey. All right, what do you oh, think about God. Poppy? Oh. Was it Poppy? No. We already talked about her. Oh my god, girl. All right, we're moving Aura. on to Aura from that. <laughs> I thought we were still talking about Poppy. Okay, but yeah, Aura, we love you. Congratulations <clears throat> on the wedding, okay? I'm not buying you a gift. Me neither. I'm donating to ACLU. Yeah, I'll do that too. But how would you know if I actually donated? <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Jax, who I love. She is the most flippy girl in the world. <laughs> yeah, she was giving us like full on 1990s R&B singer and I was living. It was very like SWV, very escape. I love it, like her references always were pulling back from like very urban influences. She kind of got a rough mm. go of it as far as it goes. Like the fan base was really hard on her and honestly, she was a dynamic performer and I actually really liked her outfits. I know people really on them. But like they're all referencing like urban streetwear and like R&B and rap and everything. Like I was living the whole season long. 
I didn't understand what the hate train is about. Yeah, I think that after the first two episodes, people really started jumping on her after the performance, you know. But yeah, I yes, I agree. Yes and no on what you said. I think that her outfits are very representative of what she is. But I also think that a few of her outfits were very questionable, like her tie-dye look, her Medusa look. Yeah. That was like, what, what the f*** is those? But a few of the outfits that she wore down the runway, I thought she looked great in, but the judges didn't like. That I disagreed. Does that make sense? Like the one that yeah. she did with like the <clears throat> golf thing, I think it was. And oh, that yeah, was great. I loved the it. croquet outfit. And they were like, oh, the mullet yeah, is yeah. bigger. I'm like, no, it doesn't. The, no. It's like four foot tall. Why does she need a bigger mullet for? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if it's milk that's wearing it, yes, the needs a bigger mullet. But like, that's Jax. The is shorter than me. And I'm five foot three, so. Take oh a guess God. how short Jack is. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, she was the victim of a lot of very minute, like, detailed critiques that made no, absolutely no sense. Yeah. And it, it was a bit unfair, because, like, again, yeah. I feel like they were just really hard on her to put her in the bottom, because they knew she was going to be a great lip syncer. Like, they knew we were going to get something out of her. Oh, yeah, I do agree, because there was one lip sync that she did. They put her there just because they want to send, oh, it was Aura Mayori. Yeah. Her Aura Mayori, that lip sync. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Jax. We'll see you on All Stars. Yep, see you, real. We have 18 more girls to go. All right, let's keep it moving. Otherwise, yeah, we're gonna be here till 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up is Spice. I think that she has great confessionals on this season and she really carried the season for the first half, honestly. This was kind of the time that I believe that they stopped airing The Real Friends of WeHo and they went back from 60 minutes to 90 minutes. So, but yeah, it's been a very long season. You go on, James. Carry yeah, on. I just say, I wasn't really on the sugar and spice train at first. Cause like, again, like, it was very easy to get swayed into that mindset of like, Yep. going and jumping on the girls because they aren't that experienced. But like, after watching her on the season, like I really grew to like her and I grew to miss her after she was gone. Like both the twins, like they added a life into the show that honestly it was missing. It, they made it interesting. And the fact that they were like dumber than a box of rocks was so fun <laughs> and refreshing for me. Yeah. Like, she was the first to admit she would be bad at something and didn't hold back. Which I respect. Like, if you're gonna like go on Drag Race and national television, you're not playing around in someone's profession. Like, you fully are saying, look, I'm here, I got here, but I don't know what the f I'm doing. But as far as her looks goes, it was refreshing. I'll say this. I'm not used to seeing like, for lack of better terms, millennial drag and like TikTok drag. And it's very that, like it took me a while to adjust to it, but I see it now. Like they're Bratz dolls and I get it. I was the Barbie generation. I, I wasn't there for Bratz. So I get it now. You're the Barbie generation. I'm the bootleg generation. <laughs> but I do enjoy the drag because it's how young people dress now, but they still made it drag and elevated it. Does that make sense? They still turn up a notch. Yeah. You know, what we think as drag is drag, it's because that's how people started dressing back in the 70s, yeah. the 60s. Does that make sense? And that's why people think of that as drag. But I can guarantee you, people back then, they would think of maybe, I don't know, Shakespeare or the Roaring Twenties or the 30s as drag instead. Does that make Absolutely. sense? Absolutely. Drag is constantly changing. Fashion is always changing. Art is always changing too. To you know? bring it back to a place of history, like when you look at, like watch Paris is Burning, you'll hear Dorian Corey say like, when I was doing drag, it was all about bugle beads and big feathers and this, and now it's about wearing off the rack clothing and looking as much like a, a woman as possible. Like drag is always evolving. And like at this place, like it is very much like taking TikTok trends and making that into your drag persona. And honestly, you could tell they're influential because every young drag queen now is emulating them. Like they all want that Bratz doll, Lizzie McGuire hair. Like all of that is coming into fashion again. Like they're making an impact here. They are influenced by RuPaul and RuPaul has influenced them to influence the majority of the people. <laughs> they have a great sense of humor, but also they always held up their chin regardless of what people say about them oh, yeah. on, well, maybe not online because they do clap back a little bit, on the show. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like when the girls were not seeing them as competition, they're like, whatever. We're just here to have fun. We're just here to have a good time. And like us or not like us, we're here and we ain't going anywhere. And I think that shook a couple of girls, like the fact that they didn't care yeah. and they let it like slide off. Yeah. Honestly, it's something I wish I had when I was on season, you know? Cause I care too much. And even when they did that, they were like, whatever, life goes on. You know, <laughs> that's a really strong mentality for someone who is just 21, you know? Oh yeah. Next up is Malaysia Baby Doll Fox. She had one of my favorites Meet the Queens because she was just very down to earth. I felt like I was talking to a sister while watching her Meet the Queens. As far as this season goes for her runways, some of them were okay and some of them were a miss, but overall she did present a lot of pageant gowns, which is who she is, which I do respect. Now, as far as her in this reunion, like 
some of a few of the girls, I feel like she didn't get enough airtime as well. And in this reunion look, she's looking gorgeous in her pageant look, but a little bit more elevated, I would say. So yeah, I really like Malaysia Baby Doll Fierce. This I really like Malaysia this season. Like honestly, <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> she's got so many names. God, I'm horrible. There's so many girls. I'm sorry, girl. But yeah, I really liked her this season. And like even her entrance look and everything, she was very cutesy and very like it was pageant, but she had her own little flair to it that made it like out of the box and almost like. I don't know, little cutesy things, like she'd wear animal ears or like hair that was different. Very foxy, right? Very foxy, yes. <laughs> I feel like she kind of got a raw deal this season. Like they really were trying to angle her to be a villain. And I don't think she was anything like that, honestly. She just seemed like she didn't want to like put up with the bullshit, which doesn't necessarily work for reality television sometimes. They like girls that stir things up. As far as the reunion goes, she kind of was throwing things and she would just let them fall to the wayside. Like she wasn't catching anything. It seemed like she was very aware that this isn't gonna go my way if I were to feed into this. I did realize that she wasn't talking too much. She wasn't giving too much answers with whatever they were throwing at her. I can feel for her because the fans weren't too nice to her on social media this season. And I've done bootleg like, opinions with other queens that have received a lot of hate from their season. Mm -hmm. Whenever a look comes up that is not good, I already see and hear them holding back already. Yeah. You're like, yeah, it's not for me, da da da. Meanwhile, if a fan favorite comes on bootleg, like, they can go right in and shade the look, talk shit about the look, step on the look, and burn the look, and throw away the look they will be given a pass, so I kind of feel for her. I know where she's coming from with that mindset. She yeah. doesn't want the hate that the fans will give her if she says anything. And I, you can tell, like, especially like being on the season and being on MTV and everything, I'm sure it got really exhausting having to see that. So she seemed like she was very reserved, and like even when they try and pick something with her, she didn't really go into it very much. She let it just fall the wayside. Yeah. And it was sometimes to her own detriment, it just seemed like she just didn't have any fight left. But the look is very cute. Like, I love it. It's very Sailor Moon villain. Like, I love the cat ears. Again, she's not afraid of feather. Like, this girl's outfits are expensive. Like, everything is stoned, everything matches, everything coincides with each other. And she's got nails on, all right? Fierce. I live. Next up is Marsha, 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 our Rebecca Glasscock of the season. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I don't know, because the wears no makeup. <laughs> For her runways on this season, I felt like a lot of them were very simple. Another queen that I thought was too green for the season. Performance-wise, she did really slay in the acting challenges, oh, yeah. the rusical, the lip syncs, but as far as the runway goes, they, they were always lacking, to be honest. I felt like it was always like a shirt, a dress, some leggings, and some shoes, you know? It was very, you know, simplistic 1950s patterns a lot of the time. Like, you could tell, like, she has an aesthetic she likes and doesn't necessarily lean enough into it. That was always my kind of problems with Marsha and like the shortcomings of a lot of her looks. It's like it felt like they could have been elevated more or just needed like a gayer touch. Like talk to a designer, talk to a friend that just get a second eye on it so you can get something thrown on it to like elevate it more because a simple dress isn't enough. And like she's a very talented girl. I feel like the runways could be a little lackluster sometimes. Like she likes to wear pretty things. You're on pretty things. You're on Drag Race. Let's let's throw some sparkle on it. Oh, I don't know if that's <laughs> the word that we're looking for. <laughs> she likes to wear pretty things. I think she likes to wear basic things. Wow. <laughs> she looked good. That's the thing. It's just like also like. Again, mm -hmm. she liked very simple silhouettes and very just like those classic things, which I can admire. Like I also like modern vintage too, but you're on Drag Race and yeah. again, just get a second opinion, throw some sparkles on it, put a feather on it, do something just to bring it up here. So it's not just, you know, cut out fabric. If you can't get a second opinion, you can always come to us for a bootleg opinion. In this case, <laughs> two bootleg opinions. You I better think that brand for her drag, it's very simple and there's a place and time for it. If this wasn't Drag Race, I would have been okay because, you know, all drag is valid. But this is Drag Race. I do want things a little bit more fun, you know what I mean? It, it's supposed to be a fun show. That's what I'm looking for. But as far as her and the challenges, I think that she really slayed. She gave us a lot of great moments and a fierce lip sync assassin, I would have to say. Clothes can be fixed. You can correct your style. You can correct your fashion. Like, that's easily fixed. A lot of girls can't bring the talent. So she's already got that. So she'll be just fine. I think that her drag now, although she is still keeping on that a little bit more simpler side, they are elevated versions of it. If you look through her social media, she's still keeping to the type of drag that she is, but she's giving us more now, which I do enjoy. Love it. We love to see it. Yep. And she looks good here. <laughs> well, you guys look good. <laughs> you look good. Next up is Selena Estides. 
I love Selena. I think she has a great personality. I think she's really funny. She made the confessionals enjoyable. Although her fashion isn't that great on this season, uh -huh. I think that overall, she made it to top six and that deserves a great congratulations. I have a similar take as Marsha as you with Selena, where it's just like, I feel like it just need to get pushed a little bit more. Like the references were super fun and super out there and different. It just needed to get pushed a little more. Like, yeah. I don't know. Again, like get a second opinion. That's what I need. That Her reunion look, I was living. The Chi Chi Rodriguez reference at the very end of Tu Wang Fu. I love the outfit, I love the hair, and I do agree with you of how she'd always have a great concept, but the campiness was a little bit too much. I know that in the beginning of the season, I, I said it in bootleg opinions that I wasn't really enjoying her looks. People kept saying, you're not understanding the references, you're not understanding the references. I understand the references, they're yeah. just not good. And she even got a golden boot for her look that she did for the LA Lamps, I believe. For example, let's go back to that look, right? Instead of wearing a lamp on her head, I would have built that into a wig as a lamp. Does that make sense? Wouldn't that be so much fierce than just wearing a Karen wig with a lamp on your head? You know, just make it a little bit more fashion. Yes, exactly that. It's just like, just get a second opinion, ask a friend that's a designer, because they were great concepts, they just need to get pushed. Like, you need to elevate it a little more. Like, a lot of the time, the costumes would swallow her up, or they'd be too cumbersome to move around in, and you can tell, it shows sometimes. Which I get, you know. Okay, let's say something nice about her, cause so far we've only dissed her, not say anything <laughs> nice. So let's say something nice. You go first. Again, like this is what I wanted to see. Like I love this Chi Chi Rodriguez reference. And again, like it's elevated. She took it and made it her own. Like I love that own personal spin. Like, you can tell she's watched this movie a thousand times and thought, Yeah, this is it. I'm gonna do it. Again, this is a silhouette I'm very familiar with. Mm -hmm. A mermaid silhouette is very flattering to the body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but with you, James, you always do two straps to hide the breastplates. I know because I'm a huge James Manscaped fan. Although I'm not wearing a breastplate now, I actually got smart with it. I actually stuffed the boobs. It's pre-stuffed dresses now. Wow. That's my new era. Uh, are you wearing padding right now in corsets or no? No. Me neither, stand up for me. I'm not standing up for you. I'll stand up for you, I'm wearing pants. Well, you're also a rake, so it's fine if you stand up. I'm gonna look like a hog if I stand up, or like a linebacker in drag. <laughs> Back to Selena. Whenever she does beauty drag, she looks really beautiful. Because we're so used to seeing her and doing like comedy slash campy drag, and outfits that swallow her. So when she does something beautiful like this, I really do enjoy. Kind of like the look that she wore for the lip sync, Lala Perusa. Do you remember that one? She looked really beautiful oh, yeah. in that one when she was doing Celine Dion. Oh, did you catch her phrase? When I think um, Malaysia Baby Doll was saying Celine Dion song and she said Selena instead of Celine Dion and RuPaul's face was like, the f <laughs> Do you remember that or no? Yeah, I do. Yeah, she said Selena. <laughs> RuPaul was like, <laughs> Close enough. Yeah, it's a nod. <laughs> Next up is Lucy LaDuca, another punching bag. Jesus Christ, how many punching bags do we let have on this loose, season? Let loose, let loose. I said let <laughs> loose. I'm giving you permission. So what's the excuse? Let loose. I said let loose. Very good. Go lemon on the track now. Now for Lucy LaDuca, <laughs> she didn't start off very well in the season and then she started reaching her high on the season. She even won Snatch Game. I had seen her potentially in the top four, honestly, because she was just doing so well in the early part of the season. And yeah. then she kind of faded a little bit, and then she just kind of went on this delusional train that Drag Race was trying to portray for her. Yeah. But yes, show Lucy some love, y'all. She gave us a really iconic track this season. I felt personally gaslit because I thought she was like a front runner. Like I thought she was going to be top four from the, like how good yeah, she was doing. Like, she's so talented. Yeah. And even yeah. on the wig loose challenge, I was shocked she was in the bottom. Like, I thought yeah, she me did really too. She well. She did really well. Especially in the boy character, too, you know? Yeah. I mean. Like, she gave us really drag, like, even as a man. That's the thing is, like, I felt gassed that, like, do I know drag anymore? Like, what is going on? Like, I was yeah. dumbfounded that she was in the bottom. But, uh, what the hell did she wear for the reunion? I feel like it was <laughs> something very generic. Um, I thought she was very funny and like, she carried a lot of these comedy challenges they had this season. Yeah. Like, she was just very naturally funny and quick, which we don't get a whole lot on Drag Race with contestants. So, she was refreshing. I thought she did really well and they were really spinning a really nasty narrative about her. Which is like, super rude because honestly, she's one of the ta most talented girls in the cast. You know what, I don't blame Drag Race for doing that because they do need some kind of villain on the show, otherwise. <laughs> It'll be season 14. <laughs> Girl, this is the season of invented villains, okay? Like, everyone had a villain arc at one point. 
on season nine, would you have rather been a villain or a nice person? Oh, looking back at it, I wish I had just been myself and been an evil, awful person. Because I feel like I probably would have made it a lot yeah. farther because they love a villain. Although, <laughs> if you come in guns ablaze and you're reading anybody, I guess it doesn't mean you're going to stick around because look at Irene. Like, they got rid of her in the first episode. It didn't matter. Oh, you know what I do really enjoy about this season is that every elimination, regardless of what the producers have planned of what the, you know, top four might be or who the front runners may be, they said, girl, if you f*** up, you're, you're in the done. Bottom. Yeah. Even with Sugar and Spice, I thought that Sugar was going to be a lot further in the competition just because the went in with so much followers. Does that make sense? Yeah. Again, like... They said no. <laughs> no. You're in the bottom this week. Yeah, they had no problem sending girls home this season, which was so refreshing because sometimes you like watch, like, how are they still here? I know. Like me, when I want season 10. <laughs> oh, what is she wearing? <laughs> this look, I was not a fan of. <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> I can only defend you so much, girl. I wasn't digging this look. <laughs> I like it from the waist up. The rest down doesn't really make sense. Not much of a connection. I like it from the back. I love the back train of the coat. Is it a coat or a dress or what is it? It's fabric. It's a piece of fabric. The train is great. I just wish the train matched the top pieces. They look bare. And is that a buckle? Like a, mm -hmm. yeah. like a jacket buckle? Like a belt, like a belt. It's a no, girl. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you it's a no. It's a no. <sighs> You know, she's cutting she's loose, right? She's loose. letting loose right now. I um, mean, she is wearing her signature <laughs> blonde hair, very teased out, very Dolly Parton. But yeah, Lucy Duca, like I say, like, I loved her on the season. I didn't love this outfit. Next up is Sasha Colby, my drag daughter. And yes, I am Sasha Colby's drag mother. I taught her how to do drag via the pandemic on Zoom. Wow. Yes, I am. I think that she is one of the fiercest queens that we have had on Drag Race in quite some time. Very well-rounded, great in acting, not just great, she excels in the acting challenges, she excels in the runways, she excels in the lip syncs especially, and she is great in the confessionals too. Yeah, honestly, it was unsurprising that she made it all the way to the top four, cause like, baby, when you got the goods, the goods are there, okay? And Sasha Colby has got the goods, and you must be such a proud mother watching her on television right now. Oh girl, all the training paid off. <laughs> Classical training from Yuhua. Like, yeah. I did not know much about her. Like, I had heard rumblings of Sasha Kobe from, like, being in the drag scene. And, baby, she backed it up. Like, she was sickening this season. Like, every single time, she always wowed me. And, again, like, sometimes it would be a very simple look. But just the way you can carry it in your carriage can mean everything. Like, the way she would just float down the runway. Everything. And I want to challenge you. I want you to say something bad about Sasha Kobe. Just do it. Do it once. She once pooped in the toilet and didn't flush while I was training her. <laughs> that was a different type of training. She was potty training with me. <laughs> now yeah. your turn, say something bad about Sasha. About the season. What I really hate about Sasha Colby is the fact that she would be off camera sometimes and I wouldn't be able to see her. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I will not say anything bad about Sasha Colby for out of fear of my own career. I will be taken down immediately. <laughs> oh my god, we're both getting this congeniality. I did hear about Sasha Colby before Drag Race because she did Women's Continental and I immediately started following her and started watching her performances and I was very blown away by all of them. I never knew where the inspiration came from and she did talk about it in the reunion. Is that an android? No, it's a... Oh my god, Tw you can never show Twitter on, I'm in public, girl. It's actually a regular <laughs> iPhone. I'm serious, like Twitter, oh my god, you opened the home screen? Jesus Christ, it's never <laughs> safe for work. I'll tell you that, girl. It is not airport safe. <laughs> yeah. Um, next up is Mistress Isabel Brooks, who is a pageant queen who is doing drag the old school way. When I first found out that she was only 24 years old, I gagged because of the way that she speaks, the way that she does drag. Her influences are very old school and very mature for her age as well. I think that throughout this competition, she has been the voice for almost every episode. She always has something to say. She always has an mm -hmm. opinion, which I do respect because some queens do hold back. What I liked about her is like, she's a bigger girl, but she wasn't afraid to like experiment fashion wise and go with silhouettes that kind of go against the grain for like no. expected big girl looks. Like she would wear pants, like she would wear different no. mini cut slits. Like she took risks and I like that about her. And also she carried the season on her back. <laughs> Like, I couldn't imagine what the season would have been like had she not been there to like make confessionals, stir up drama. Like, almost every fight that happened on the show, she somehow had involvement with. And I love the fact that like, she just wasn't afraid to pick one. Yeah. Which most girls don't do that anymore. Like, they are so fearful of what everyone's gonna say about them. And she did suffer the repercussions, but even then, if you watch how she conducts herself online, she doesn't give a Yeah. You get your accounts deleted, she doesn't care. <laughs> 
I love this look on her mistress. It's almost like a graduation look. She's got this little tassel. Instead of being a tassel, it's a chain. She moved it to the other side. Ready to graduate, girl. You know what my favorite thing about this look is? Nothing. The fact that she's wearing a blonde fashion doll from James Mansfield Beauty. Ooh. Ooh. Clock the hairline. It's gorgeous. I know. I can't afford James Mansfield. That's why I'm wearing a wig, not gluing it, and hiding the lace line with my hood. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, that's what I'm doing, girl. <laughs> Look at this lace, girl. <laughs> Drag is about making it work. It's all about illusions, baby. Well, girl, let me stand up. I'm wearing f pants, girl. Like, it's all an illusion. You know, you got stones on that top, so it counts, it counts, it's valid. Yes, baby, it's elevated. <laughs> Those are the small details we were talking about. Next up is Lux, and I have to say, I really loved Lux this season. Like, she brought you fashion, she brought you confessionals, she brought drama. Again, another girl that wasn't afraid to say what she was feeling. And what I liked most about her is, like, when it came time to nut cutting, she would talk the shit, but she also backed it up. That's what I loved. Yeah. Like, when she had the lip sync this season, like, girl, she mm -hmm. ate her up. I stand. I know that in the beginning of the season, her and Irene had a little bit of a disagreement about if it's 40 inches or not. I think that, I don't know if you agree or not, but the newer generation that buy wigs, they count the inches from where the last part of the track is. Mm -hmm. But originally, when we talk about wigs, about length, we start from the top of the head. Does that make sense? Yes, that's how you measure a wig's length. That is the proper way to do it. Yeah, not from here. No. <laughs> here instead. So I'm uh, questioning if they measured Lux from here or here. Because I think if Lux measured her hair from here, it would have been 40 inches probably. Because, you know, here to here is about 8 inches and it turned out to be 32 inches only. But, you know. Yeah, I enjoy Lux too on this season. I think that she provided some great confessionals. Some amazing fashion looks. And I do enjoy the fact that she's very outspoken. She doesn't give a fuck about what anybody says. No. Watching her, I wasn't sure how far she would make it. And I was pleasantly surprised that she made it all the way to the end. Like, baby, what I loved, again, is like a girl that's not afraid to say how they feel and be confident. And had it been any other queen, I feel like she wouldn't have gotten as much hate as she did. Like, the fact that she was so confident, people had such a problem with. And I couldn't fathom why. I think I know why. I think we all know why. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, if it's somebody yeah. blonde and white and skinny, they would have been like, yes, girl, fierce. Anything opposite? <laughs> no, ma'am. We're about to cut yeah. you alive. <laughs> I like how you say, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm like, I clearly I knew why. I know why. You're like, I know why, too. <laughs> 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 but I wanted them to search themselves and find the answer. <laughs> she is one of the few queens that grew up watching Drag Race and now is a cast member on Drag Race and I'm really excited to see her blossom. I think that she's one of the few queens that gets every freaking reference and she knows when to throw the ball at RuPaul, she knows when to catch the ball from RuPaul, and she's just all about Drag Race. She lives and breathes Drag Race. Yeah, like she was a walking encyclopedia for catchphrases, but what I liked about that is like, it wasn't like bleh, regurgitated. Yeah. She also knew how to catch a moment and make something her own and come up with her own shit. Yeah. Like it wasn't just throwing things back from the past. Lux New London, crack the coat, baby. Mm-hmm, and this look at the reunion was cute. Looked comfortable. <laughs> it did. Comfortable? Is it still good for you or no? I love this look. I love the hair especially. It's good. I love it. Oh, baby. Last up is Anitra. Another Asian representation for me. She is gorgeous. Not only that, but she is a hilarious queen in the confessionals. Very, very resting face. But nonetheless, an lip sync assassin for sure. What I will say, what I liked about her is the fact that like she got a lot of flack online, but you would not catch her in a fight. Like yeah. she didn't respond back to anyone. Yeah. It was radio silence. And I respect that. She's like, yeah. you can talk all you want about me. But I'm on this season, she said. And also she's my Las Vegas sister. <laughs> oh, another thing I do also enjoy about her, not only does she not get into the fight, I don't know if you agree or not, or if you notice or not, hmm. whenever a queen gets eliminated, they post the looks that they, would have worn, or if even if they did bad in the runway, they would repose the look anyway. But with her, whenever she has a bad look on the runway, she said, no ma'am, not every look needs a photo shoot. I respect Girl, that, I like she that. barely posted anything. Like I was living like- <laughs> Because some of her looks weren't that great too. And she was like, I'm not gonna post them. But I do agree, not every look deserves a photo shoot. You know, it's not great. It doesn't need a photo shoot. Don't yeah. showcase it. Sometimes if you showcase a look that you would have worn on Drag Race after you eliminated and we're looking at it like, girl, what the f is this? 
It's not gonna do well for you, girl. It's not gonna make us go, wow, she was robbed. Instead, we're the, saying, yeah, RuPaul made the right decision. <laughs> yeah, I could see it. Again, like, people will dissect it, and I love that she's like, I chose me. I chose my happiness. You're not getting photo shoots if I don't wanna do it. Yeah. She barely posted any of her looks, which is like such a gag. It's such a statement, too. It's like, I made it to the end. I don't have to do any of that. <laughs> yeah, she, she posted the ones that we love, which I do enjoy, because again, not every look deserves a photo shoot or needs a photo shoot. But yeah, her and this look, gorgeous. I don't remember what it was, but I'm trying to look. <laughs> yeah, they're all very simple looks, not much to talk about, but you know, that's why we're here yeah. to talk about them on the season. But I love the girls. They all came very comfortable. They were smart this time around. I mean, some to the detriment of us who have to come trick critique the looks and talk about them. <laughs> but work, Diva. And I think that Anitra has one of the biggest arches on this season. She was almost like an underdog. I didn't really know much about her. Like, I've lived in Las Vegas now for a little bit, but I had never really seen her perform. Like, she's a piranha girl here. And I was very much presently surprised. Like, she really opened my eyes, like, this side of, like, piranha girls where it is about the tricks. It is about just dancing. Those girls do, like, seven-minute numbers every night. Like, it's crazy the stuff that those girls do. They have to have an outfit that coordinates with a theme, like, almost every week. They have to have new costumes made. Like, she was built for this show. I wasn't surprised by the way that she performs because she was India Ferris' drag daughter. And India's a fierce performer. Mm hmm. Something happened, probably. I don't know. You were just like, mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Did something happen? Oh, no. I just, <laughs> nothing happened. I said, uh. Because she's a Vegas Work. queen, too. You're just like, mm hmm. Okay. Now, who is your favorite to look from all of these queens? <laughs> I'm tired. I love Malaysia's this episode. I thought it was super cute. I live for a Sailor Moon reference. I don't know if that was the, the idea, but that's what I was getting. Oh, Chippy Moon? Yeah. I think she was just representing a fox <laughs> and she's a pageant queen. Well, because Malaysia baby doll fox, fox ears. Well, baby, I gave it another storyline. <laughs> for me, it was Mistress for me. I enjoyed the look the most. Oh, I changed my mind. I like Mistress too because she's wearing my hair. So <laughs> I support my customers. I like Mistress because of the look itself entirely. It's just beautiful and it's really well made and drag. Now, who are you rooting for in this season? Hmm, I would say I'm torn between Anitra and Sasha Colby. Like, I love the legacy of Sasha, but I also just love the raw talent and hunger of Anitra and the fact she's a hometown girl. So, yeah, ugh, I'm torn. So between the two, who would you like to see? All right. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna rip it off quick like a Band-Aid. I would like to see Anitra. I would like to see Sasha. Okay. Based on record and also based on the fact that if Anitra was at Anitra, sorry, Natasha, if Anitra was asked to go back on All Stars, she would go back. Whereas Sasha, I feel like, does that make sense? Yeah, I could see that. Like, I guess it's like she already proved so much this. Why would you need to go back? Because she comes into the competition as a legend already. You know, I would love to see Sasha win. And not just because she is a legend, but the fact that she did it really well in almost every episode, you know? Yeah, if she were to come back for an all-star season, they have to stack that cast with a bunch of girls that are like at the same caliber. The next time I want to see Sasha on all-stars, it's when it's an all-winner season again. That's when I want to see Sasha. Work. <laughs> Who do you want to see win Miss Congeniality? Ooh, Miss Congeniality. Who was congenial this season? Oh, here's the thing. I would like to see Spice get it. Um, let me see. I don't know. I think one of the twins should get There's it. There's not much enough airtime. No, hear me out. I think the twins should get it. Like, let's say a double winner for a change. The twins should get it because honestly, yeah, they got a little like nippy with some of the girls. But again, what I liked about them is the fact that if they had stuff thrown at them, they could dish it back, but they also would just take it and like let it slide off, which is a very good quality trait that you don't see in someone that's very, very young. So I vote the twins. For me, maybe Robin. Okay. She's very nice, I think. At least that's what production show, <laughs> based on the three lines that she had for the entire season. Also, a congenial drag queen is such a tall ass. It does not exist. I know. <laughs> it's a white whale, baby. Who would you like to see return for All Stars based on the queens that were eliminated? Let's see. If I had to go from this, I would love to see Jax in a future season. Um, I would like Marcia, to see Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Yes. Mm -hmm. Irene. Irene, of course. Um, Lucy LaDuca. Spice, I wouldn't mind. Malaysia. Well, let's just say that the entire cast, girl. Oh my God, let's bring them back in teams. <laughs> yes, charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and synergy. <laughs> Well, James Manscaped, thank you so much for joining Bootleg Opinions this season. We'll be seeing you very soon, okay? And thank you so much, Yuha. You know I always enjoy coming to see you. <laughs> you should clean this place up, I'm just saying. Oh, bye. Bye. Hey, squirrel friends. When one video's over, click another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead.
I support you.